In this video, we're going to complete example two, which is all about using Z scores to make comparisons. In this particular video, we're just going to use the formula to calculate our Z scores. So for example two, it says that Kate ran 100 meters in 13.4 seconds and the 200 meters in 27.8 seconds. The mean and standard deviation for these events are in the table at right over here. In which event did she receive a better result? Use Z scores to justify your answer. And note, remember that lower Z scores make you a faster runner. Okay, so we'll start with the 100 meters here. In the 100 meters, we learn that the mean is 14.8. Now, the symbol for mean is x with a bar above it, so x bar is 14.8. Kate ran the 100 meters in 13.4 seconds, so she was faster than the average. So we're going to say that her score, or x, is 13.4. For the 100 meters, the standard deviation is 0.6 seconds, so we'll say that s, the standard deviation, is 0.6. Six. Now we can use our formula to calculate the Z score. Z equals X minus X bar over S and substituting our values, X is 13.4, X bar is 14.8 and S is 0 0.6. Now I'm going to use my calculator to find the solution here, but before I do that I want to point out that we need to put brackets at the top of the fraction. That's going to force the calculator to subtract before it divides. So we're going to go bracket 13.4 minus 14.8, closing our brackets, and finally dividing by 0 0.6. And we get negative 2.3 continuous. I'm just going to write that to 1 decimal place. Let's now look at the 200 meters. What is the mean or what is known as x bar this time? The mean in the 200 meters is 32.2 seconds. 32.2. Now Kate ran the 200 meters in 27.8 seconds. That's her score or x is 27. And the standard deviation, we can see, is 1.8. So S, our standard deviation, equals 1.8. Taking our formula, Z equals X minus X bar over S, we're going to get X, which is 27.8, minus X bar, 32.2, all of this over our standard deviation, of 1.8. Remembering that at the top of the fraction, we're going to put it in brackets, forcing the calculator to subtract before it divides. Open our brackets, 27.8 minus 32.2, closing our brackets, dividing this by 1.8, and we get negative 2.4 continuous. So we'll write that down as negative 2.4 to 1 decimal place. Now these Z scores are very, very close together. I'm going to mark them on my bell curve. So negative 2.3 is probably about there in orange and negative 2.4 I'll do in pink. It's about at this spot here, just next to each other. Now negative 2.3 is actually a higher Z score than negative 2.4 and we can see that because it's closer to the right side. The further we go to the right, the higher the Z score becomes. Now usually a higher Z score implies a better result, but that's not the case in this particular example. I'll show you why. In the 100 meters, the mean is 14.8, meaning that you run the 100 meters in 14.8 seconds. Now Kate ran the 100 meters in 13.4 seconds. That's this orange marker just here, 13.4 seconds. Now if you think about this, 13.4 seconds is better 
than 14.8. The lower the time, the faster you are running. So you actually want to be below the mean if you want to be a faster runner. So in this particular example, the closer you are to the left side, the faster you are. We wrote a little note about that. Remember that lower Z scores make you a faster runner. So she got a better result in the 200 meters. So we will say that she got a lower Z score in the 200 meters and therefore a better result. Anyway, that concludes example two. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.